Hello wonderful people, Dr. Seal here, Junior Doctor from Sydney, Australia, and in this video it's another episode in the Dr. Seal Intern Diaries Reflective Thingy Majiggy series. Uh, anyway, today we're talking about what it has been like to start off and be a intern for the trauma team. Now, I'm working at a hospital in Sydney that covers the traumas for almost all of New South Wales. So a really big catchment area and we're like the level one kind of trauma service. So we get all the helicopter fly-ins and whew, it's been intense. So let's talk about it. The first thing I want to talk about is the first couple of weeks. Now, right now I'm okay. I've I've kind of found my fit and I get how things work. But man, the first couple of weeks were very intense and I kind of don't even remember it. I think I repressed a lot of it, but I did jot down notes from my first couple of weeks because I wanted to share them uh, and not just forget them because it was really intense. I just didn't know how things worked in the hospital. I didn't know um, how to complete discharge summaries and I had to do 10 of them a day. Uh, and you know, some of the other people on the team don't do the intern jobs, so they didn't know. And it was just like, ah! But I'm in a really supportive team and uh, I, I got the hang of things. It took about a week, but for the first, I guess from Monday to Wednesday on the first week, it was just constant, just chronic stress. I just had that chronic, chronic cortisol level. And there was just so many people, so many stakeholders that I had to like appease. The nurses, the allied health, the patients, their families, um, you know, the discharge destinations where patients are going to, uh, the managers, and it was, and of course my, the medical team. And then when you have all these people that you're working with, plus like clinical reviews, whew, it can be overwhelming. So I remember a very, very simple clinical review I got called for. It was my first one and I just had no idea what was going on. It was a guy who had fractured a rib, which is really common in trauma. And when you fracture a rib, it's not like fracturing a bone where you can put a cast on it and immobilize it. The ribs are over your lungs. You can't immobilize them. You have to, when you breathe, the ribs work. And so the main management of fractured ribs is just pain relief so that they can continue using their lungs and so that they don't get pneumonia because if they stop breathing deeply because of the fractured ribs, they get pneumonia. Anyway, this guy, the pain relief wasn't enough. He wasn't breathing deeply enough. I got a, a clinical review because he was hypoxic, not, not enough oxygen in his blood. And I arrive and then the nursing staff start talking to me about the HFNP which I now know is high flow nasal prongs. And they go, hey doctor, so the, HF, <laughs> the HFNP was on 3040, now it's on 2130, and oh, sorry, 3021, and they're giving me all these numbers and I'm like, okay, let's just take a step back everyone. What does HFNP stand for? <laughs> And the nursing staff looked at me like, this is a baby. All right, let's 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 just get, go from the start. High flow nasal prongs. And um, the, the first number, the like uh, if it's 30-30, it's 30% uh, oxygen, so FiO2, and 30 liters per minute. So the higher the numbers, the more oxygen, the lower the numbers, the less amount of oxygen. This guy had just had less oxygen. And all I needed to do was increase the oxygen, improve the pain relief. That's it, that's all I had to do. But all these numbers were just being shouted at me. Oh, 40, it was on 40. 30, now it's 21, now it's 3021. Uh, doctor, what do you want us to do? Do you want us to increase it with a bit of paper? And blah, 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 blah. And I was just like, okay, relax everyone. Uh, let's just treat me like a baby. The next part I want to talk about is how trauma has kind of changed my view of the world. Uh, this is no kind of benign surgical term. This is very intense. You're, you're dealing with people during the most life-changing events in their life and often these are unexpected events. They're always unexpected events. No one wants to get into a car crash. No one wants to get run over by a car and lose their leg. And um, just, you know, the unluckiness of some people is devastating. Um, if you're just driving home, you're never safe from trauma. I, I'm seeing people who are just going to go visit their families, they get into a car crash and their life has changed forever and sometimes their life ends and it's devastating. First thing that the surgical term has taught me is I'll never ride a motorbike. <laughs> And I probably won't ever ride a bike again on the road, my gosh. This, it's just, just devastating. You have no, it's not that like people are bad bike riders. It's that if a car hits you, you've just got nothing besides a jacket to stop you from having your leg intertwined with the le with the wheel. Um, and you just get degloved bones flying everywhere. It's just, wow. So no bikes for me. And I recommend everyone to not ride a bike. No offense if you do though. It's the, you're seeing the moments of life change, but at the same time, if you can save the life and, uh, and save the limb and um, get people back to a 
point of stability, you're also seeing some of the happiest points because when things are so bad, there's also like so much hope to, that things can get better. Like people just really hope things get better. And if you can make that hope happen, it's really, really empower, a powerful thing. Another part of trauma that I really like is the fact that there is no one type of person that you see. It's not just elderly females um, or, I don't know, like young 20 year olds get, getting appendixes uh, out. It, it's anyone. So we've seen people pregnant with twins in a car crash. We've seen um, old people with no kind of family supports. Uh, so you have the interesting psychosocial elements. You have the, 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 the young and anything in between. And you know, trauma can happen to everyone or anyone I should say. And to have the set of skills that you need to address uh, acutely traumatic situations, uh, that's a really nice set of skills to have. The final thing I wanna talk about in trauma surgery is the resuscitation. When someone comes in after a massive trauma, I don't know, they got into a car accident, 100K an hour, um, you get a trauma required and the trauma team arrives and so do a lot of other teams, depending on the mechanism. Um, usually you get cardiothoracics, you definitely get anesthetics, there's the ED guys there already, um, and you might get other teams depending on what the injuries are. In medical school, you get taught about primary survey, secondary survey, and maybe you get taught about tertiary survey. And when you get examined, it's you have this beautiful linear ABCD approach to trauma. Now, in reality, it's chaos. It's nuts. <laughs> It's, it's chaotic, I should say, because the people who are leading it are specialists in managing chaos. Uh, when someone has polytrauma, multiple injuries across the body, I mean, the person leading those responses, they, they are dealing with so many stakeholders, which are the doctors and the nurses, the people on top of airway, on top of the chest, on top of circulation, getting access. And they have to um, delegate and prioritize things. So a really interesting debate broke out at a trauma I was at recently, whether someone who was in a motorbike accident who um, had the legs mangled should get a CT brain or not, because the helmet was intact and there was no suspicion of head injury, there was no loss of consciousness. But there was a delay to getting to theaters to save the leg. Uh, it was tourniquet, it had, the tourniquet had been on for a couple of hours, so we wanted to like get to theaters quickly. But you also want to do a CT brain to make sure there's no bleed. Um, but he didn't have any neurological signs, so the debate was, is it worth getting the CT brain? These aren't things you can learn in medical school. These are things you have to make a judgment on at the time based on the clinical picture. And the judgment was just to go straight to theaters uh, and not do the CT brain because there was no um, neurological deficits and um, no suspicion of head injury. Uh, which is probably, you know, that's the right decision, but there's no kind of textbook answer to that question. And to hear the debate between like the different consultants about what they should do, uh, how respectful yet authoritative each consultant was, how they would say, you are the team leader, but this is my opinion. I disagree with you, but of course you're the team leader. We'll do what you want. That kind of language it was great. Uh, and it makes me really want to be like a trauma consultant. Uh, but my heart is with mental health and that's where I'm going, but I still love that kind of action-packed type of medicine. It is only kind of, I don't know, 10% of trauma is that resuscitation. The other 90% is the rehabilitation or the management post-trauma to get people breathing well and, and back to normal and that kind of thing. So it's not always that exciting, but it, when it is, it's pretty intense and uh, wakes you up more than a cup of coffee. I'll say that much. Whew. All right, that's it for this video. I guess I just want to say to any other interns or medical students starting internship. Yes, it can be very tough when you start new terms, how to get a hang of things, how to get a handle on things. But I, all my experience and all my terms so far, I've had a really supportive team, really kind. And this term has been no exception. I work with legends in the field who have been in wars and, um, you know, and, and have seen any trauma you could imagine. So um, I'm really grateful to be doing this term. I just hope that you guys are excited to be doctors or, you know, whoever you are. I hope this was interesting and I wish you all an absolutely lovely day and I'll see you in the next video. All right, bye for now.